So for this video, I'm actually going to be revamping the back that we have on the right hand side to make the one on the left hand side. So I don't want to actually make use of new um, back locks and all. So I'm just going to just make this into a better version. So this is me removing the lock, the D-ring, the back chain, then go into the other side remove the same thing remove the power cord that i have on the d-ring yeah so after which i'm going to um disassemble am i right yeah disassemble i'm going to disassemble my um bag so because i need a power cord yarn because I, I don't want to make use of the stitch again so and so we can just go ahead to just the same with the bag completely after which um, we are going to um, lose the stitch that we have there so um, if you have a yarn winder you can actually make use of a yarn winder but if you don't you can make use of this manual method that I used to just wind your yarn together because if you don't wind it it might end up getting tangled so um we have a danny needle you can use any of the plastic or the metal one and this is the custom plastic mesh and i'm going to be using for the bag so but um this has a, a like a cover like a, let, 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 let me see let me kind of show you like this is how it's made so this is the size of the bag that you're supposed to have and then you know the cover on it but this is not what i want actually so i am going to cut that that's just i don't know but it's not useful so i'm just going to cut um the flap part because i don't want um that type of i don't want um my back to be that small then i don't want um that type of cover on it so i went ahead to the other side too and use my scissors and carefully trim the flap away so now we have you know the straight mesh if you have a regular yarn you can just make use of it and just cut your desired length so we can for the stitch that we're going to be using on the bag so um we're going to be um doing some sort of um what do they call it i don't know like a slanted a slanted um stitch here so wherever we start from the second from the second um all of our mesh so just as you are seeing and then we go on but this is not going to we're going to be making use of three um three boxes per row so you're going to see so now i've um slanted this yeah and um you're going to see i'm not going to go beyond the three um boxes that i've occupied yeah so i'm going to go into the other boxes Yeah, I'm just trying to show you the slanted um, stitch. So then you can just go. You're not going to go into that fourth stitch, but you're going to keep going up. Yeah, so you can just make use of the three boxes that I told you. So just watch carefully. Just watch closely so you can understand what I'm saying better. Yes. So this way we're going to keep going up, keep going up this way. The next one, and then slant it to the next one by the farthest 
left hand side So just keep doing what you have to do yeah you keep doing it up to the topmost then I'll show you how to do the rest because it's not like a one pattern repeat kind of stitch that we are doing here so Yeah, this is how the back looks like. So what we have for the back, yeah, it kind of looks a little bit slanted, if there is anything like that. So yeah, th this is me. I've got it to the, to the top of, you know, that row. And see, this is how you need to finish it. The same um, two stitches, same way we just started. So we're going to finish it off like that. And just leave that um, one space here that we have just the same way we skipped the first one down part so now we are going to be alternating it so um the next two row the next three boxes yeah i had to turn this upside down so i can show you um we we'll skip that space that i told you about and now we're going to be working with this stitch but opposite sides we're going to be working that is going to be like the opposite of what we have for the first row and yeah this is what we have for it so two like we started like alternate two then we go to the next one and um yeah this is me turning it back so that you can understand and then we're going into this if you watched my um basic stitches um, tutorial like the tutorial for plastic canvas that's teaching yeah so I talked about um, um, if you want to like cover the whole of your mesh you have to you know keep working in like you know the edges of the work that you you worked so the third I was I worked on the first third one so in the next one I worked in the next two plus the last of the three boxes that I started with yes so that's how we are going to be calculating it so if we are going to cut um, like a plastic mesh the plastic mesh is going to be like three boxes 
plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 till you reach your desired length. So if you want like 10 rows of this, it should be 3 plus um, um, 9 multiples of 2. So that's going to be 18 plus 3. So you're going to have um, 21 boxes. Yes, for the breadth. So and the length should be your preferred length, just as we have. So this is for uh, if you have like a regular mesh, all those big ones, like and cut it out yourself. So this is me just trying to um deal with the second row here, and this is how it looks like. Can you see the opposite way? So and this is how it looks like at the back. Yeah. So this is the end of the second row and we finish it the same way we finish that one. See the same space that we skipped. And this is kind of bulky here yeah, because so is um where we um eat our yarn when we started first. So the same way we started the first row and skipping this box, this particular box. The same way we started the first row is the same way we are going to be going on. If you look closer to it, look closer, you see the same way we started the first one, skipping that first that first pace is the same thing that we're going to be doing here too. Yeah, the first one. So that that's how we're going to be alternating it. So the first the third the fifth seventh that's like odd numbers now will look the same now the even numbers which is the um second row the fourth the sixth the eighth the tenth so on the even numbers will as well look the same so that way we have like two contrasting stitches yeah and you're going to see the pattern like how this is going to look at the end of the day yeah at this stage this is how it looks Okay, so this is the end of our third row. Can you see we have exactly the same thing as what we have for our row one? And look at it, we're not done yet. And look at how beautiful this is already. Now, I'm sure you can't make you can't wait to just make this and make a beautiful bag out of it. So We can go ahead to our fourth row which is going to look like our second row like i told us so we're going to be skipping the first one as usual so working with the alternate um the the angles that we need to work with so yeah this is me turning it upside down so you can see what i was trying to say yeah So we can just keep working on what we have to work on and then I'm going to cover the rest of the plastic canvas and here is what you're going to have yeah look at how beautiful beautiful it is you don't need to pray just follow the pattern that I have shown to you yeah and if you have any questions please just drop them in the comment section I am definitely definitely going to reply you as soon as I get them so now I'm counting the edges 
so we have like one two three four five six one two three four five six so we have three um rows ring in the middle so I'm, yeah i attached my um bag lock here can you see six one two three so that's a total of 15 rules yes so this is what we have here and um attaching my back to i want it to be even so i'm going to you know try and fold it and see how i can just calculate can you see this is what we have so this is just to aid the back to you know stand if you place it on a table so so yeah one two three and i inserted it now i'm going to after inserting it and clipping it i want to work on the the um sides the sides of the back yeah this is the flap that i removed actually i i got another because the flap was not enough to like cover you know the flap was just a shorter one i think it was like short of seven more boxes or so so i had to just cut another um um back side from another um, one of my regular mesh that i have yeah so one two three i inserted it in between one of the boxes so and here one two three but i made sure that i had I calculated the size I'm going to um that is going to fall into the down part of the sides of the bag that I showed you the other time so it can vibe I can stay in the middle too. So this is me just trying to trace the um O and calculating this um the row so the third one in between the third and fourth one and here in between so I think I have seven boxes for the flap for the back sides rather so I inserted into the fourth one yeah that's after calculating you know you just if you calculate you get the measurement you're supposed to get so and this is it before adding um lining and now the next thing to work on is our edges and you can have it as simple as you know anything you want so this is me finishing um the bag yes this is me finishing the bag so now i want to work on the edges and this is a closer look on it so what i want to do is okay yeah um the yarn is short so let me try and just pull this one and just get another yarn so we can go ahead and work with our edge now the same thing we did for the bag is the same thing that we are going to do for the back sides too yes so i've done one then i'm going to be showing you how i just did the other one so it's not going to be much repetition though because we've done it for the bag exactly itself so yeah this is just showing you like the process of making the back sides so and like i told you this time that's what to do four five six seven so this is like three plus two plus two if you understand what i mean it's like the analysis i gave you the other time was the first three then you you add plus two then plus two so that's how you're going to get like the numbers of row that you want <clears throat> now this is one method of adding our um D wing to the side you can either do it like this just place it where you want it to be and then keep doing your stitching on your plastic canvas 
or you finish doing it like I did the other one that you are seeing um, behind this one I'm making and then you now stitch it so you're going to see that one so basically this is just me showing you you know how to go about this you don't really have to stress yourself too much about this because after um, doing it, I, I feel this is like the best method actually because you don't get your yarn ripping probably due to you not hiding the yarn that you used to attach it after finishing your stitching if you understand what I mean so I feel this is just the best way to go about it and then it looks natural it looks like you know it looks like oh how, how, how did you get to do it it looks more artistic yeah let me put it that way so then you can go on to your second row still following the pattern we did we're going the opposite side of the first one we did and you know our dealings with the d-ring so just continue the same place where you're supposed to put it is still the same place you're going to put it no no pressure nothing nothing so yeah then you can go ahead if you see it is attached then you can go ahead and just continue your work to the down part so just let's just finish it and you know i'll meet you back on the third row trying to fix this one too yeah and here is what we have so after getting here yes we can now insert pack into our d-ring just to attach the last part to yeah And guys, please, um, let me just take this moment to just apologize about the camera quality. I know that, you know, if you don't put it to like, like 1080 um, resolution, it might not be as clear as what you want. So, and for some, may not have that much data. So, I'm very, very sorry. And this is where I need your support to subscribe to my channel and, you know, just help me serve you more better because this is when i um like if it is when i know that you know you guys want to see more videos from me and i'll be more motivated to like okay like get a good um um filming either phone or um camera and yeah, I had that super glue because I made a mistake. Yeah, that's why I always advise people to be careful when they are working with their plastic canvas because this it's it literally wanted to disgrace me. So I had to just use the super glue to just quickly cover up that track and just you know attach the the um plastic canvas together before it's before if not i just have to just abandon what i've done and then just cut again and start the whole process again so that's the whole um usefulness of being careful with your plastic canvas right so yeah this is almost the beginning of the end yes and we still have a few more things to do that is working on the edges and you can hide your hand at this point um if you feel it is too short yeah this is the first method like i told you so the second method i'm going to be showing you um on the second um back side so for the second one we're just going to be attaching it directly you see it's the same measurement so yeah on the fifth row on the fifth box the fifth line should i say that's between the fourth and the fifth one so that's why i attached it there so i wanted it to be like you know uniform so 
um yeah sorry this is my method of working um the d-ring because i wanted the old silver thing covered up yeah so it doesn't show how irregular the stitch might be because we're working with plastic canvas here so it might not really cover like the silver um d-rings so yeah i'm going to after doing this i'm just going to hide my yarn and cut it and then i'm going to show you how it looks like here so this is what the other one looks like so and this is what the two looks like as well so any one that you prefer between the two you can just make use of with no pressure with no pressure now for the back flap i don't want like a back flap that will like cover the whole work yeah so this is like what i want so i went ahead to like you know cut the middle of the mesh after measuring what i wanted to do so um so i went out to attach the um can you see i attached it to the mesh first then i went ahead to use my scissors to cut it you can use like a hot knife or like um, a soldering iron if you have one to create like a clean effect for what we have here can you see yeah this is how it going to is going to look like so yeah and i'm going to be attaching it i'm just like trying to like show you how this is going to you know work so it's going to look like this so i think we can go ahead to work on our back flap now so um let's just work on the edges first before we go on to our back flap so for the edges you just need to keep you know doing the overlock stitch this is the overlock stitch you can watch closely so you just means just keep going like um doing your stitches like from the back attaching from the back and making your yarn like come over so I'm going to do um, two stitches in each of the spots and for the corner I'm going to be making it five so that it can cover um, the corner very well so this is me just trying to like watch um, cut like cut the time for the video so that you can you know so and this is how it looks after finishing with the edges so it's going to be neat and all so for your the back flap you can go ahead and do the basic stitch i'm going to attach the video to the big basic um stitching for a plastic canvas i'm going to attach you're going to find it in the link of this description of you're going to find the link in the description of this video sorry so yeah so basically you just have to do your basic stitch or any other stitch so i started with the edges first actually then went ahead with the down part of the flap first and then went ahead to can you see the down part first then i did it all over up then i started doing it Doing the back stitches so you just have to be careful so that you don't end up breaking your plastic mesh too yes because this um yarn was kind of was kind of um a little bit big but i say a little bit big because i was just all trying to be careful to you know um, with the plastic canvas that I was using
so the fact that i was doing my own like like the way the mesh was doesn't mean anything you can do it horizontally or vertically like just follow what you have to do so and this is me trying to like test it and see if it's going to fit well if what i'm doing is still like aligning to what i want to achieve so the back flap is going to stay at the side let me see so yeah so we can just work on the edges of this so what i did for the edges of the other one was i did like a single crochet stitch can you see this is it beside what i was doing so and i wanted to like um i wanted to like do like a mini tutorial for how i um do my my lining so but at the end of the day i realized that i didn't need the lining for this because it made the work like kind of bulky so you can go ahead to use your lining if you need it so i added after this is so this is me trying to like join my bags together so yeah like as you can see i did like a single crochet stitch for the edge of this one and i'm going to show you this is the reason why because i wanted like this kind of edge this straight this kind of edge effect so that's why i made use of like a 2.5 millimeter um crochet hook to um work single crochets on the plastic mesh edges so we're just basically going to go into each of the holes so that it can you know tally it can be uniform so we're just basically going into each of the holes and going back and forth no overlock stitches we're just going back and forth like a normal basic um stitching that we learned <laughs> in our secondary school yes so this is what we are going to have yeah so no overlock stitch we are going to the next one and attaching it to the next box too so no overlocking so just make it make sure you tie it. stitch is tight and just you know go on like that no pressure if you need to take more time on you um attaching the side take take more time that you need take all the time that you need because this is you trying to like create a beautiful bag so you don't want any kind of rushing you don't want any kind of creative block for you you don't want any kind of mistake that will end up making you lose the work and like you know starting the whole process again yes we don't want that Yeah, and for the edge, because the edge is supposed to be attached to like, you know, two parts, because it belongs to the edge of the um, mesh belongs to like two parts, it belongs to the down part, and belongs to the side that we are coming from. So we are basically going to do like an overlock stitch there and just go on with our normal basic stitch that we're working with before. So we're going on with that. 
it will reach our next corner can you see so just to make sure that your corner is the same thing make sure that you calculate it very well and see that so it won't deform your bag or anything so we are going with the normal um stitch stitching that we were doing before then get to the edge sorry i am kind of short so i was trying to like manage the yarn i didn't want to like start hiding the yarn and so i was trying to like manage it so it keeps falling off here yeah, the overlock stitch that you said for the edges you want to do that like one to two times so just finish the remaining part with the normal stitches that we're doing just go back and forth back and forth can you see how our bag looks and the uh, the funny thing about those bags is that i didn't end up using all the yarn that i used for the other bag and they are like literally the same size if you understand what i mean yes yeah, so and i didn't finish because this plastic canvas um mesh it actually saves a lot of you know yarn so i didn't finish like i i just used like you know a little bit more than half say um say like um one um two over three of the yarn that was in the previous bag yeah another tip is i anytime i'm working my paracord actually make it um some sort of damp so that i can go through my plastic mesh you know so that it doesn't give this kind of like friction because the plastic is kind of flexible so and like you witness you can just it can <laughs> spoil at any time if you are not careful with it so that's why actually i i usually tampon my my yarn not wet actually just tampon so that the friction is not so and here i finished it and i'm just trying to like hide the yarn and just move on with my life <laughs> and i'm so sorry at this point i know some will be like oh this girl she talks too much how are we talking to you we are learning please just manage me i'm just trying to be like like an original person i just want to be you know educating or should i say i i just want us to learn together in like um a comfortable environment where we can just be ourselves. so if you can just be myself or my on this channel there won't be any <laughs> <laughs> there won't be any need for me to like you know try covering up some tracks that need not to be covered so i just want originality so this is just me attaching my chain yeah see so if you have like um a span a um yeah is, is that a span oh i don't even know all this um i just attached it with one two like that I'm going to look for the name and just put it there so and see this is the um, result of my bag and even with the fact that I'm using an Android phone can you see how beautiful this looks can you see even with the fact that my camera quality is not really too good so please recreate yours and let me 